Hello and welcome to the Man On Podcast. I am FPL Dronach. I hope you're all well. We are doing the FPL takeover today. Planet FPL. Excited, guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely perfect. Nice to hear. Um, so, for all the new listeners who we should hopefully obtain through doing, being on Planet FPL, and, and thank you to James and Such for letting us be here. Um, I'm uh, FPL Dronic. You can find me on Twitter at, um, at Dronic underscore FPL or Man on FPL on Twitter as well. That's our sort of uh, podcast name. Um, I've played FPL or pl- let's say fantasy football games since I was about 16 years of age. I'm now. 38 we won't talk about that um so i've been playing for a long long time doesn't mean i'm any good but uh hey um i started this podcast last year uh, as a solo bought uh, fpl thomas on board and we've recently grown with two new additions uh, great guys from the community um and yeah uh, hopefully definitely going forward lots of exciting things happening so as i said i am joined today um, as your host by other, the three other people we have with us. So, number one is FPL Thomas. How are you doing? I'm mean, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um, yes, as Darren alluded to, I am FPL Thomas. You probably will have noticed my um, Twitter handle popping up on your timelines, usually getting into heated debates at times about controversial subjects, but I don't shy away from those. Um, I'm an Arsenal fan. Um, I'm a big Bukayo Saka fan, so it's quite fitting that we're doing this podcast the day after the night before, should we say. Um, I, like Darren, started playing uh, fantasy football games in my sort of early mid-teens. Then I started making babies and <laughs> family life, and just, I stopped. So I put a big pause on everything and didn't play for any fantasy games at all until about um, about three years ago I picked it up again and um, yeah, just got sucked into the community, hence um, creating a Twitter handle that is dedicated to that and then, like Darren said, joining um, the Man on Podcast and yeah, we, we've really now played multiple, multiple different fantasy games. Uh- Along with me and FPL Thomas, we have CM Fantasy, one of the, the latest additions. How are you doing, Martin? Good, mate. Good, mate. Yeah, good. 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 Um, yeah, so, yeah, as Cam just said, my actual name is Martin. Um, but, yeah, uh, CM Fantasy, my Twitter handle. So, um, yeah, I'm a Reading fan. Been playing FPL, yeah, FPL for forever, really. Um, but it was, uh, you know, during the lockdown when um, Fantasy Championship Manager came along that... Um, you know, really started to, you know, with, with, with all the time on, on, our, on our hands that we had then, um, starting to get into, you know, creating content and looking at data and um, taking it a bit more seriously, I suppose. And that, that's sort of, uh, the, that's the thing that's inspired me, I guess, to start looking at other fantasy games, take it all a little bit more seriously and start creating content and all that kind of things. That's what. And last but not least is Craig Kev 32 How are you doing, Craig? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Um, my name's a bit easier to work out. My name's actually Craig Kemp. Unlike everyone else, I'm the quietest confused. That makes the quietest confused as everyone else. But maybe 32 is my actual name. Just my lucky number, Carlos Tevez, lucky number. But yeah, I've been playing FPL since 2007. Um, pretty consistent results in the sort of top 100k, I think top 90k, seven of the last eight years. So I'm fairly good with that being really good. Um, very much like a stats player, I would say, in FPL. Um, try to look for players that are due points. Um, don't like taking hits. That will become very consistent throughout the season and how much I'll be grudged taking hits if I have to do it. Um, and I'm quite good at benching points. I probably should get that out of there quite early as well. I always moan about my first sub getting a massive forward and I would have messed that up. But yeah, most people may know me from the Championship Manager podcast. Is what I started doing to Fancy Championship Manager. That was my first sort of way into this sort of content. And really enjoyed making that and we are, we are here now from mainly from that so uh, you're looking forward to it this season perfect nice to hear uh, we play a lot of different games as you can hear um, so bread and butter I think uh, we will play FPL um, we will be playing Sky this year uh, they, they just take forever to release the game um, you can follow their social media on Twitter but uh, they never bother updating it 
Um, we play uh, GAFA, which is the championship game, which we'll be touching on a bit today. Uh, we play, as we said, Champ Man, uh, so that's in its second season, and that's coming to an end in, in, in two weeks, but uh, hopefully there'll be a season three, and we'll be playing that as well. Um, uh, yeah, fingers crossed, thank you. <laughs> um, and, in ter- and in terms of other things, they're the sort of main ones, FPL, GAFA, Champ Man, um, we do play the sort of ESN as well. We're looking at the Scottish one and other things, but we don't talk about them on the pod because, <laughs> let's be fair, we're completely blind to it. Um, so, yeah, that's the main brunt of the games we play and the information you can get from us about those games. Running order today, guys. We're looking at... Uh, we normally do sort of community talking points. So what's popped up in the community of Twitter? Um, so what's sort of the talking points? And we focus in on one or two of them. We've got questions from our usual followers. Uh, so we've got a really good fan base so far. Uh, you know, since when I started and brought Thomas on, uh, we, we did pretty much a season together um, before we brought uh, Martin and Craig on. Uh, and so we've got around uh, about 150 people who listen regularly so hoping to add to that hoping that you guys follow us and enjoy us um, and ask us questions in the future because we do like engaging with our community it's exactly how we met how we were made uh, and we try and do a lot of things for you guys uh, as we go along through the season so that's you know we've got a lot of league set up which i believe will be our pinned tweet as well for, if you go to twitter so you'll see all the pit the league codes for us um, and the competitions we run for the leagues we usually have prizes for as well uh, we're yet to decide what they are this season but uh, we always do we did it last year so we'll definitely sort something out for you guys because um, that's what we'd love to do is give back to our uh, fpl community um so in terms of, uh, we'll do the talking points, then we're going to have, a, uh, Craig's going to jump into some defenders for FPL, uh, we've got a sort of 4.5 defender uh, pre- review going on for FPL, which will be quite cool. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Gaffer, we've got one or two questions for Gaffer, the championship game uh, that's just opened, which uh, I think a few, a lot of us were very excited about, we chucked ourselves into making some drafts early on. Uh, so we've got one or two questions about that, and we'll finish up today with with Chad Man. Um, so perfect. Should we start with the community questions, guys? How does that sound? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah happy with that. Perfect. No problem at all. Community questions. Here we go. So the first question is, in fact, the only question for the community today actually is this. So the Euros are over. That's that's sad in itself, to be completely honest with you. Um, the best team of the tournament were ultimately the winners, yeah, maybe, but a valiant attempt by England and lots to be proud of, 100%. Who were your standout players and moments of the tournament? We've we focused quite a bit on the Euros, obviously, in the last couple of podcasts, because obviously that was the only football we really had and that was going on. Uh, so, a couple of players of the tournament, guys, uh, I think maybe we'll show up one or two each. How does that sound? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, for me... I'm going to steal Spinozola very, very early. <laughs> I'm going to steal him. Uh, thank you very much, Dasha Dude, for the, for the follow there. Appreciate that. Um, uh, so Spinozola's stolen. You can't say him. <laughs> um, and for me, I'm going to say uh, someone else who was quite impressive, I think. And, I, and I'll stay away from Italy. It was, uh, was, I think, I don't know if this was an official team, uh, team of the competition or not, but Schick, uh, the Czech Republic striker. Uh, I saw a sort of, I don't know if it was an official or unofficial team of the Euros today, but he was in there at the top. Uh, and when I thought about this question, that you know, he's, he stood out. I think he's definitely put his name out there as, as somebody who's going to, you know, most could be purchased, could definitely uh, have a transfer this season. So I'm going to go with Spinazzola and, and Schick as my two players who stood out. How about you, Thomas? Um... I'm gonna, well, I think my first pick is, is pretty obvious. He was the favorite goalkeeper of the tournament, and it's Donnarumma. And I've, yeah, obviously, he's, I think he's only 22, 23, and he broke through um, at AC Milan when he was about 18. So he's been around for a little while. Um, and I've always seen, you know, he's always looked good. But I think in this tournament, he looked really, really good. And I, I, he just fills that goal. And, yeah, I just, I genuinely, I, I think he is borderline, probably top three goalkeepers in the world now. 
Yeah. Um, obviously, all black is is still probably regarded as the number one. But mm. yeah, I mean, at the age that he is, in ten years' time is when he'll be coming into his prime. Um, so yeah, amazing, amazing goalkeeper. And I feel like even though he did obviously concede a few goals, I think he was definitely the standout goalkeeper in this tournament. And um, my second pick. Uh, the obvious pick for me, I could, I could, I could say Saka from an emotional point of view, but I'm not going to go there. Even though he did have a fantastic tournament, um, I'm going to say the player that I was, I've been impressed with that I honestly didn't realise he was anywhere near as good as he is, and that is Chiesa, so a second Italian. Um, I thought he was really, really good, and and uh good at doing the stuff that you know strikers don't always get the glory for so some off the ball runs and he was quite strong up against um defenders um dragging defenders out of position um and he just looked dangerous you didn't want to leave him alone so i feel that um especially in the final i feel like that um he really he put in a good performance he did what he needed to do he put a good shift in um, and I think actually he was named in the team, the tournament as well. Um, but yeah, for me, those two, I mean, Italian, the Italians were fantastic in this tournament. So it's, it's really difficult to look past um, a lot of the Italian te um, team. It, it's remarkable to think that actually Chiesa wasn't the first choice, if I remember rightly, at no. the start. It was Berardi. Um, and I'll be fair, he was dog shit. <laughs> I, I don't know why. Yeah. You know, when you bought, when he, they bought started putting Chiesa on, I was like, why didn't you start with this guy? It's like it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, good shout on on both of those. Uh, Martin, how about yourself? So I mean, it was it was fairly short lived, but I really enjoyed watching uh, Netherlands games, and uh, Denzel Dumfries was a was a fun player to watch. I definitely, uh, you know. Enjoy it as he came to England and see him, see him on the flanks uh, regularly. That'd be cool. Um, so I thought he, he 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 stood out for me in terms of you know being a fun player to watch that I enjoyed. Um, and then I think I've, I've noted a couple of Danish players as well. I think Koyberg had a great tournament. I think he showed um, some some attacking um, sort of potency as well that you don't really see in a Spurs shirt. So that's he surprised me a bit. Um, sort of um, how he. Not how influential he was, but um, he showed a lot more to his game than I think we've seen in a Spurs shirt from an attacking perspective. Um, and then I think Downsguard as well, the young kid, you know, coming into the team for Ericsson, um, you know, that's, that was big for him. He, he handled it really well and was really impressive. So, so Downsguard as well. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Good, good shouts on those two. Uh, Craig, last but not least, we come to you. Sorry, we've probably stolen all the people you wanted. I was going to say, as a newcomer, I thought I'd get first dibs, but you've left me. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even a dross. Not, um, not a gem, not mate. It's not a gem. Uh, first, I'm going to say Carl Walker first, because yep. I think he was always regarded as a bit of a defensive liability. He switches off at times. I barely remember him having a bad game all tournament. He seemed like all of him as defence was obviously pretty good. But I think we saw a new level of his defending. He seems to have matured quite a lot this tournament, understood his role a little bit more. I think before the tournament starts, especially when... There was still like the clamour to get trained in the squad. I think a lot of people, if you said take two right backs, I think a lot of people would have been quite happy to leave Walker behind and take Trent and James. And the fact that he's ended up in there and played like every game and been so significant to that defence, I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. So I think he was really good. Um, and second, I'm going to go, I'm going to leave it today, I think. I'm going to go for, for Petrius, um, Pedro even, of, of Spain. Someone who gets sort of 100% pass completion rate in a quarter final at like age 18 is like ridiculous. And obviously, he plays the way a lot of Spanish players play, and I'm sure they'll be looking for the next Javi, next Iniesta. I'm not saying he's quite at that level yet, but to be given that sort of responsibility in the Spanish central midfield, he was getting kept on as well when I was taking cocaine and stuff off. So he was clearly the, the most influential, it seemed like, in that midfield, and at such a young age. I think he's like a considerable talent. I've never really heard of him before this tournament, if I'm being honest either. So, um, yeah, I was really impressed by him. Looking forward to see what the next sort of five, six years or so, how he developed. Nice. And obviously, as well, now, won't they? Because they've got budget problems, they'll be selling everyone. So, <laughs> there's the chances at Barcelona now. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to them. I'm, I, I did see this. I think I've shared a graphic round with you guys recently of their wage bill and who they need to sort of cut and how much it costs them and how far behind they are in terms of 
being able to pay, and that's even without giving Messi a new contract. So it'd be lovely to see them completely capitulate and a lot of their decent assets come to the Prem. That's what I'm kind of hoping. Um, but we'll see. That is sort of the community questions this, for this week, guys. We do have a question from uh, a follower which didn't really fit in any of our sort of uh, categories of football. Um, but... Um, it was from Steve Bird, and it says, uh, what are you all looking forward to this season uh, in fantasy football and real life? Don't know why it says it is very close between the top three or four picks. Ignore that bit. No idea why it says it. <laughs> Technical glitch. Absolutely no idea what that means. Um, uh, but I'm not going to fix it in midstream. So what are you all looking forward to this season in fantasy football and in real life? Uh, Craig. Considering we started with me and ended with you, we're going to go back the other way now. Oh, perfect. That is still my answer. I'm looking forward to no carnage, is my answer. I'm very much a week to, so I, I like to play like five, six weeks in advance in all fantasy games. Um, and it was obviously a massive nuisance to try and do that last year just because of how much carnage there was. So I'm, I'm hoping that this year there'll be a lot less. Obviously not guaranteed with the way the world is right now. We, who knows where we'll be in January, February time. But I'm hopeful that it'll be a lot more predictable and the weeks will be um, relatively back to normal again from a fantasy football perspective. Um, in, in terms of real life, oh, what am I looking forward to? I'm going to a wedding in France in September, I'll say that, because I haven't left the country for obviously a fair amount of time. I, I've got a friend who lives abroad there, he's getting married, haven't seen him for a couple of years, and some of my English friends as well that I don't get to see as often as I like to are also going, so it'll be a little... Uh, sort of lads trip as well as a wedding so that's something to look forward to in the next couple of months assuming we're allowed to go I should be double jumped by then so I think I'll be allowed to go nice good start strong start Martin <laughs> um, so fantasy what I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to bigger match days um, I, I wasn't a fan of having games on every day and you know only having a couple on Saturday and a couple on Sunday um, so very much looking forward to um, you know having more Premier League games on Saturday and Sunday um, um, I'm playing Sky for the first time. Um, I'll be doing that this season, so looking forward to that. Um, and also playing Gaffer from the beginning. So it's, it's only the second season of Gaffer, the, the uh, Championship fantasy game. Um, I discovered it sort of about a third of the way through last season. So playing that from the beginning as well will be good. Um, and then in real life, um, well, I've, I've kept that to football as well. But you know, actually going to some games. Um, so yeah, in a, in a normal world, I do I do go to a fair amount of games uh, to watch Reading. So looking forward to getting back to that. Um, it's our hundred and fiftieth year this year, so I'm hoping there'll be some sort of cool stuff going on around that. So yeah, getting getting back to the football. Nice. That's a good one, Thomas. Why am I leaving myself to last? What have I done here? <laughs> I've been kind because right. Craig moaned, and now I realise I'm going to struggle with. <laughs> well, um, I was going to say it is a good one that Martin said because I was going to say similar in terms of the real life. Um, I, I would ideally get to two or three Arsenal games a season. Um, I did actually used to be a steward at Arsenal um, for about three and a half years. So I used to go to every game at that period of time. But um, yeah, no, I'd, I'd like to get back into to going to games. The last game I um, saw... I think it was a draw anyway. So, yeah, I just want to see an Arsenal win um, with Arteta in charge. You know, I've done, uh, to be fair, I think the last game I saw, Freddie Lundberg was the manager. And I feel like that was the last game I saw live uh, in that that brief little period that he had. Um, So, yeah, looking forward to some live football and just being just normality, I guess you could say. Um, in terms of foot, fantasy football, um, I did play Gaffer last season and, and did really enjoy it. I also played Sky and enjoyed it for most of the time, but um, kind of fell out of love with it a little bit towards the end simply because of um, like Craig's point about all of the fixtures and Martin's point about fixtures being all over the place. It did make it very difficult to plan. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to giving Sky a proper go and also trying to... Um, FF Scotland, uh, Fantasy Scotland. I'm giving that a whirl. Um, it'd be a nice kind of switch off time. And I've got a group chat if anyone's listening that's playing um, Fantasy Football Scotland. Just um, give me a message and I can add you. Um, so, yeah, that's me. Nice. 
Oh, saving best to last, or, or the man with absolutely zero clue what to say. Um, for me, uh, in terms of fantasy football, you've all covered, I think, pretty much the basics of, of less, less, you know, less games every single day, more 3 p.m. Saturday kickoffs. That would help a lot with Sky. I, I, I fell by the wayside on Sky this year simply because of the the game weeks were just all over the place, and, and I, I was with work being so busy for me it was it was kind of difficult to keep on top of so yeah i'm looking forward to all that uh this year i'm going to try and take less hits in every single game i play um it's something i've got to do i say it every time they all giggle it's yeah great fucking laugh in it lads <laughs> <laughs> um i've got to do it because if I'll i give you a prize if you give prizes after the winners of our mini leagues i'll give you a prize if you manage to survive to a september without taking hits well, I got one. I got to take some here and there. Like I meant, I meant less. Like no need to just take one for the sake of it. Like if I've got an injury or certain suspension, I got to do it. Um, so yes, taking possibly less hits is is my idea this year. I'm I'm just like this is our second season. It's for, for well, I say second season of the Man on Podcast. So it was a fantasy football thing. Having the four of us going forward for a full season where COVID sort of gone now and we're able to do this regularly we've got you know this pod coming out every monday possibly two of these a week with different focuses a preview and a review show you guys have got the the individual ones you're doing with people and having interviews and stuff so i'm looking forward to this channel growing with the season going on which is which is one major thing uh in real life i just had a son as everyone knows he's a week old today um in fact he was born 15 minutes ago last Monday. Um, it's 9.30. So he'd be here now. Um, and so for me, I'm just looking forward to obviously watching him grow up now. Um, future England captain, Theo Addy. That's all I'll say. I'm just pointing out that none of us commented that we're actually looking forward to meeting each other for the first time. I left that open for one of you three to come in behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, Craig. don't want to meet each other. Don't 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 <laughs> Uh, yeah, obviously we are. We are going to meet each other, aren't we? Which is going to be great, um, and and something we're allowed to finally do. You know, uh, seeing people which we probably haven't seen for a year and a half, if, if not more. You know, it's it's ridiculous. So uh, yeah, meeting each other, Craig. There you go. That would be also lovely. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. No problem. As long as you're happy. Um, perfect. So that's the that's the community talking points done. And thank you for the question, Steve. We do really appreciate it. Um, and obviously, any uh, going forward, guys, anyone who, who joins us, anyone who, who likes us and wants to follow us, we always put a tweet out to ask for questions. Uh, so by all means, ask us some questions as we go along through the season. Ask our advice. That is exactly what we are here for. So I think now we'll step quickly into, let's say, some FPL questions. And we don't really have, let's say, FPL questions this week. What we have is... What, what we want to go through is Craig is going to jump into a 4.5 million defender review because obviously the prices have come out for the, for the uh, FPL so we know about them so we can so he wants to talk about them which is great and then I think we're going to jump in and give you we've all done a draft and I think we're going to give you three players each of who we think is going to definitely be in our game week one team uh, so let's let's jump into that now so Craig over the floor is over to you. I will get up the graphics for you now. Cool. So yeah, I decided to look at this price point because I think it's one that everyone's going to own at least one player. I think quite a lot of teams will probably have two, maybe even two, maybe even three at this price point. It's the it's the price bracket every year in defence where you feel obliged to try and get it right. I know, and I, I feel like it's the price point you don't really want to be taking hit to making transfers in either. So I think it's quite an important one to get right from the start. I know last year, I, I started bathing last year and had to move to Dallas fairly quickly and was quite annoyed. Although it obviously worked out for the good and I probably gained me about 70, 80 points after doing it. Um, I, still, I was still quite annoyed like to use a transfer on a 4.5 million defender. So um, the, the main spur as well was, was Wesley Fofana here. Every draft I saw on Twitter basically had him in. And you can see from what's on the screen now that his ownership is 27.6% at the minute. That's the third most owned defender in the game. After I think Luke Shaw's at forty percent and Trent is twenty seven, um, they both him and Fafana are both twenty seven. So there's clearly a big sort of a bandwagon to get on Fafana, and I couldn't work out why he was being so popular. So I started to dig around uh, in the stats, and you'll see on the right. I don't know what's happened there. We've jumped on the three lines. Not that it matters. 
But um, looking at the, the table, th that table on the screen right now, for those on audio, I'll, I'll sort of read through it, is points for sort of, uh, what have we got there, seven defenders from last year at four, that were priced at 4.5. Now, obviously, Dallas is a bit of an anomaly because he spent so long playing in midfield. So we're not going to get a defender that comes and he gets 171 points, I don't think, at 4.5. But as you can see from Kufel, from Concer, from White, Loughton, Walker, Peters, and Fafana, there is some sort of um, things you can take away from that, I think. What I was asking myself, I think what everyone should ask themselves, is what they expect from their 4.5 million defender points-wise. And look at that table, I think if you can find someone that scores around 110 points, plays about 35 games, I think the big one is to try and look for points per start. If you're getting over three points per start from your 4.5 million defender, I think that's really good. Um, you're looking at sort of 10 to 12 clean sheets, and then if they can get attacking returns on top of that, that's like obviously even better. And I was looking at Fafana and thinking that he's not going to fulfil any of those things. So for those that can't see, he only got 71 points last year from 27 starts. That's an average of 2.6 points per start. He got seven clean sheets amongst that. And I don't see where he's going to improve. I accept he might play more games. Maybe he will play 34, 35 games. But if he averages 2.6 points like last year, that's not going to break 100 points. So I really don't think that he's necessarily the best defender to own um, in this price bracket. I don't know why anyone else thinks of that. For Farner to start with, and maybe just this sort of theory in terms of 4.5 million defenders. Um, for me, I haven't had Wesley Fafana in any of my drafts at all yet. Um, the only one out of this list that I've actually looked at is Ben White. Um, and to be fair, I wanted him when he was at Brighton. The, the fact he might move to Arsenal has actually put me off a little bit. Sorry, Thomas. Um, but that's more not to do with Arsenal, actually. That's more to do with the fact of his game time. Um, you know, he might not be first choice. If he's first choice at Arsenal, then at 4.5, he's probably a no-brainer. Um, but, you know, if he's not and he's going to have to share the, the minutes, then, yeah, we know at Brighton he'll play every minute, pretty much. So for him, that's not that's not bad. The other is maybe Lamptey. I'd think about. Um, you'll also see Craig. I fix I fixed the graphic as you were going along there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's too too clever, too clever. Um, what about you guys? Any anything else from the four point fives? Well, I was just, I was just waiting, waiting for Craig to tell me which one I need to pick. To be honest, I've got a list of some stats as a four point five million defenders from this year, and tried to use these metrics to work out who to own this year. But so I think the, the, the main takeaways are, I think you want someone that's going to play 35 games, you want someone that's averaging over three points a game, you're looking at about 12 clean sheets, and if they've got attacking returns as well, it's good. I think you can sacrifice a few clean sheets if they're really good attacking-wise, like Kufa was last year, obviously got seven assists, a few less clean sheets, but made up the points through the, through the assists. Um, I think a lot of the final falls into the trap with a few others, I think, where... Um, they're centre backs with no attacking threat at all. I think Concer's kind of in this bracket. I think Ben White's probably in this bracket. Connor Cody's in this bracket. Do you want? Are you happy just getting clean sheets and maybe some bonus, or are you going to punt on someone that maybe has at least got some attacking threat? We'll move on to some of these players from this year. So slightly controversial one up first. I've, I've, I've listed them in order of points per game. So. Um, Nat Phillips last year, 15 starts at 4.5 points per game. Um, seven clean sheets in 15 starts is outrageous. And also, he's got some attacking threat, basically averaging a goal attempt per game. Obviously, the big question mark of him this year is whether he's going to play. We've got Van Dyke back, we've got Gomez back, we've got Matip back, and. Canati. That's the guy I'm trying to think of his name from Leipzig. Yeah, Canati. So, I don't quite know where Phillips fits into this. He doesn't. You don't think he starts? No. Yeah, I think I, I I think it'll be I think it'll be Van Dijk and Canate with Gomez pretty much most of the time those three rotating. Uh, Matip might play one or two of the sort of let's play you know the bottom sides and and the cups, um, and he'll play cup games. I can't see him doing many Premier League starts. Is it this got quite an easy start? I don't know if he'll maybe start the first cup. He was very good at the end of last year. Well, I don't know if start this year. Will Van Dijk be available from the start? That's one thing we don't know. He's I think he's going to well. see that. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to rush him back straight away. It'd be nice to see them. Uh, but I think, you know, I think it would be Canate and one other. I hope I'm saying Canate right. I think it's Canate. Um, he's obviously got the scope. I think he made enough of an impact last year. Someone may take him on loan. Liverpool may be prepared to let him go. I think he goes somewhere else. That's, that's what I, I kind of hope that happens. I hope he goes on loan. 
he's a great defender. Don't get me wrong. I, I'd lo- I'd love him to get starts and and, and play regularly. He, he's a top top defender. So one to keep an eye on in pre-season, I guess, because like, like you said before, yeah. like, um, using a transfer early on 4.5 million defenders is probably not what you want to be doing. So, you know, that Phillips is risky from that point of view, I suppose, because if he's not in the team, then you're going to need to transfer him out. But I was looking at him, I think I'm, I, I'm planning to use a wild card in like the first four or five weeks, and maybe I'll use him then, and then sort of reassess the land of land after. But he's just on my radar as someone that, He's like I say, his ownership is quite low at the moment, so he's just on my radar as time to watch them. They've been overlooked. We can, we can move on from uh, from that trip. Yep. This player, Diego Lorente, so he's a, he's a lot more now. I actually think he's probably first choice centre back now at Leeds. Um, he's second on the list for points per start, 3.6, which is up near two foul levels last year. So if he plays 35, 36 games, he should break 120 points, which is, say, very good for a 4.5. A um, little bit of goal threat. We didn't see the best of him in the Euros, I don't think, so I was trying to play him right back and obviously he's playing in the middle. Um, but I think he, another one is quite overlooked, I think he's, he's only shipped under 1% as well. Leeds haven't got the best, necessarily the best start, but um, if you were just want to get a defender to hold, I think he's a, a little bit more interesting. I think actually he's my first choice at the minute in, in the 4.5 bracket and say not many people will, will have him. And I've not really heard him spoken about either. I don't know if anyone feels any differently about him. I think Leeds got a lot better, didn't they, second half of last season defensively as well. Yeah. Have you, Craig, have you spotted the um, the rotation that you can do between Leeds and Brighton? The, uh, you see, uh, I saw that tweeted out. Yeah. yeah it's a very good um, rotation. I think you can dodge all the teams, the traditional big six, apart from, I think it's two game weeks, virtually the whole season. So definitely, like having a Leeds and a and a Brighton asset could be could be the way forward. We've got White and Lamptey at four point five, so one of those two with with the rental. You won't be. you won't have White for very long. <laughs> he, he's, he's coming home. I will tell you that he, he is coming. Home. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about Lamptey because he's next. Yeah, I was going to say Danger Man Lamptey. So also, can I just say, Darren, um, White is probably going to White if he's signed for fifty million. You think he won't be first choice? Well, well, I mean, it's a lot of money, but let's be fair. You spent eighty odd million on Pepe. <laughs> Place closed. Oh, listen, that's, that's <laughs> fair right, bitch. Fair right, bitch. And Pepe's coming into his own as well now. Yeah, he, he, he had a good. He, he but, had a good end. Um, yeah, no, a hundred percent. Why it would be um, starting centre back? Who Probably with? Probably with uh, Gabriel. 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 Okay, that's what. That's what I was yeah. saying. All right, cool. So yeah, the length is next, 3.2 points per start average. Obviously, I think quite a lot of people owned him at the start of last year, quite frustratingly, because he seemed to always be promising returns and then never really delivering them. But he's um, he's got some attacking threat, obviously. I think Brighton, XG-wise, and a lot of the sort of statistical analysis suggests they're quite good in defence and more clean sheets are coming for them. Um, so if he can stay fit, um, I think he'll probably get close to 120 points as well. I think he's one to... Heavily considered as another one to assess in pre season, I think, if you think he's one back to his best, and two, if his fitness is, is sort of back up to scratch because he missed a big chunk of last season. And the same people, people still hung up on having him last year and not getting returns from him. I think I was in that club as well at the start of last season, but I'm prepared to give him another go, I think, if, um, if he's fit. Yeah, definitely. I think for me, he's, the, he's probably the one that's got the biggest chance of doing something ridiculously good. Yeah. Um, you know, just, just having a season where 4.5 just, just looks madness. Um, you know, the way he was getting forward before he got injured last season. Um, and like I say, he always seems to be on the cusp of maybe getting returns. So I think if, you, if you're if the sort of player that looks at a ceiling um, rather than a steady eddy, I, th- I think Lamptey's probably, probably got the biggest ceiling, I, I would think. But. Can I just say that for me, I think the issue I would have at the moment Lamptey is that I don't have a lot of faith in Brighton's attack so if they were to go out and sign a better striker I'd have a lot more faith in picking up assists I mean I'm not sure if he's on corners I don't recall seeing him on corners but he may well be Um, but if he isn't then I would be worried about how many returns he would actually get I have faith that he created chances but um, yeah, that, that would be my concern. But if they do sign a striker, 
and uh, maybe an upgrade on um, mobile then definitely it would be um, near the top of my list. Yeah, of course, going for the 10 assists, the, the 10 clean sheets, 5 or 6 assists, I think that's quite possible over a season for him from fullback compared to some other ones, and that will get him up near 140 points, I think, if he gets that. And that was my answer. I think that will be difficult for any 4.5 to beat. So I, I tend to agree he's probably got the most upside when you want to wait a couple of weeks before you get him. Mm. But it takes quite a good rotation with Lorente, isn't he? If you, as you just pointed out. Um, next up, mate. Yeah, uh, Matt Matt Lauer, up, up next. This is the typical steady Eddie. Um, although he plays fullback, um, one goal, one assist last year. I think everyone remembers the goal quite vividly. It was the week everyone cap- did they captain him? I can't figure out something happened, didn't they? And they were, I didn't know him. They had a double game week. That's it, double game week. Yeah, I got through that wire after the FPL Cup, I think, and the guy knocked me out by two points, and he had let, uh, let out of his team, and I had Eric Peters, and I think it was about an eight-point swing between the two of them, and I got knocked out of the cup because of it, that, that 50-50 call. But he's going to create some chance, he's going to have some goal attempts. Burnley will be fairly consistent for clean sheets. I, I expect him to keep 10 clean sheets again. I, I think you can pretty much bank on him and get 100 points. I say he's not the most glamorous pick. No. But, I think that you can do a lot worse than him as a sort of a fifth defender that you might have to throw in for home games or something. Um, and so he's averaging, uh, he's averaging three points per start last year, which is a lot more than everyone else on this list. So that probably goes to tell me something. Here comes a controversial one next. <laughs> yeah, but the, the question I asked of Ben White, so 2.9 points per start average last year at Brighton. Um, I say not many goal attempts, not many chances created, 12 clean sheets. Is he going to do any better than that at Arsenal? Is my big question, even if he moved. So, so FPL wise, does that make him a better FPL asset, the fact he plays for Arsenal? No, no sure. Not for me, actually. To be honest with you, I, I'm not overly fussed about owning him in FPL. Um, I'm more, uh, but if he goes to Arsenal, I'd be more um, keen to own him in Sky. Um, I think he's a ball playing centre back, and he will. He does have the scope to be moved around as well, so he could be put into right back. He could be put into central midfield or, or defensive midfield. So he he will have that opportunity of occasionally being um, out of position. Um, but I do think he is probably a more of a sky asset than a than an Arsenal asset. No, no, sorry, than an FPI asset. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Okay. Few yeah. more to get through. Who's, who's the next one? Cody. Cody. So, like, same as White, two point nine average. Literally no goal attempts. Doesn't create anything. Fully reliant on clean sheets. And obviously Wolves. Now we don't know if they're going to be uh, good. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's so hard to predict now, aren't they? Um, they're going to play back. He's obviously his best in the middle of a back three. But they're going to have to go with that this season. It's all very up in the air how it's going to be for Wolves. So I don't think you start with him. That's fair. But, but if you, they could go on a run of clean sheets, they proved it before they can do it. And you, you know he's going to play every game unless he's injured. So if you want that guaranteed starter, you'll probably get, you'll probably get up near 100 points, I would imagine, just by starting every game. The, uh, so, uh, the, the next one for me is uh, let's flash it up and get rid of it, but you, you might want to talk a tiny little bit about it. I only put Eric Dyer in for the same reason. <laughs> the fact that new manager, maybe new formation, will they keep more clean sheets? Will he play central midfield? I don't know. There's, 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 wait, there's things with Dyer that may... I think he's got a bit more goal for it as well than some of the other defenders on this list from centre back. So well, I ignored Regulon like, first of all at 5 million and I'm starting to think now he might be a better asset than I initially first thought he was, especially if he plays wing back. And I think Tottenham assets might just be a bit overlooked now because I think with, with Santo they may just be a bit better um, defensively and that may get him a few more clean sheets and that will then take him into that echelon of sort of lower 100 points as well. So I thought I'd flag him just as a possible option that someone may not have even looked at. Yeah, very true. Okay, two more to go. Um, so yeah, Luke Hayley, I think he was the popular one last year. He actually made all 38 games last year and just got exactly 100 points. The, the good thing about him is that somehow from playing all 38 games at right back, he didn't get a single assist. I think he played some games at centre back, had a few injuries and things, but I can't... <laughs> His numbers have to improve, I think. I think he'll play all 38 again unless he's injured. And I can't see another season where he doesn't get a single goal or a single assist from 27 chances created. So I think you have three, four assists to his points, so well, that's up near 120 points again. And I think that's, so that's a good number for this price bracket. 
So, unlike a lot of the other players we mentioned already, I don't see where they can improve from last year's numbers, but I think Aiden's probably got a bit more scope than some of those to actually do better than last year. So, maybe yeah. you could ignore his last year a little bit more than some of the other players, maybe. And last but not least? And then, yeah, then, well, I just want to say... Where are starting? Um, 11 goal attempts in 27 starts is not great. Um, six chances created. I don't think he's, he's obviously, I think he's quite a small centre back. Right? So I don't think he's going to have the goal threat of Sancho and Evans. If they go four at the back, will he start over Sancho and Evans? I think there's some risk there. I think he probably will start, but there's some risk. Um, I think he's probably going to be groomed eventually to go into the middle of the back three instead of Evans. Yeah, he ended up playing there in the FA Cup, didn't he, when Evans went off. And I think he did quite a good job there. But I just don't see him as a goal-scoring defender. So he's solely relying on clean sheets with him. And I, I really don't see Leicester this year doing any better than what they did last year for clean sheets or for like final league position. So if he only got 2.6 um, points per game average last year, is he really going better? That I don't see it. And yet he's the defender that everyone's obviously gravitating towards. So just some food for thought for everyone listening to this really and looking at the, the stats on the screen. That uh, if There's some logic that I'm missing with for fun and I'll hold my hands up and take it on board. But I, mean, I can't see any reason to own it. I mean, I think it's... At least four or five from that list we've just touched on that look better to me on paper, at least. I uh, I would wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. Just a bit of quick maths there for you. Um, the two point six points per per game average over a season that takes him up to ninety eight point eight points. So like Craig mentioned, just about hundred points. So if he plays, plays me, more. I would I would want more than that. So if he plays some more, so Luster Luster yeah. got you over league as well this this yeah, time. Exactly. Yeah, Pere- exactly. Pereira Pereira's fully fit again as well, isn't he? Uh, Castagne we might be out for a little bit, but yeah, he's going to be really sharing some minutes. James Justin will come back at some point. Yeah, yeah. So Fafana's really going to be sharing those point uh, sharing those minutes, unfortunately. So I think Craig, you're absolutely right. Thank you. Probably worth pointing out that I haven't mentioned any of the newly promoted defenders. I didn't know enough about them. I didn't watch enough of the Championship last year. I don't know if Mike's got anything to add about any of those four point five defenders that could be good. There's a few others as well, like Rob Holding. We mentioned if White doesn't sign, could do okay. Ben and Rack at Southampton's in there. There are a few others that aren't on this list. Um, I'd say I, I expect two or three at least will break 120 points in his price bracket. So it's quite important to get one of those. So I don't know if anyone's got any thoughts on the newly promoted ones that we can quickly talk about. I, I think Re, is Rico at Brentford 4.5. I yeah. Think, um, yeah. He, he would be the one for me. He's the, he's the promoted defender that's got the, probably the most attacking threat. Um, and Brentford are, Brentford are an attacking team but they're not going to keep clean sheets so you're, you're relying on them scoring a lot of goals probably so I'm not massively keen but um, if you did want to go down that route then uh, probably week out at Brentford would be the stand up I think I think if he gets like six clean sheets and like seven assists he'll be up near 100 points now that may be possible for him if he, if he does that then so it's not all about the clean sheets with the, with the attacking fullback mm. but there's a lot of say Central defenders without much attacking threats, you are solely on the clean sheets for those. But as you say, if there's a good fullback that can match you foul numbers a little bit for attacking returns, then they'll be up there in the sort of the, the higher points for, for this price bracket. Perfect. Well, appreciate that, Craig. Really good insights on the 4.5 million defenders there. Um, hopefully that helps a lot of our listeners with uh, if they had any ideas of getting a 4.5 defender in and who to do. So that's really good. Appreciate that. Uh, next, I think, guys, we're going to walk into the three players that we've chosen each. Uh, so a defender, a midfielder, and a striker who's appearing in our FPL Game Week 1 team. Um, and I think we're going to jump into them. Who wants to go first? I'm going to open it up to the floor. You're first, I think, unless you upload them in a different order. Uh, yeah. I can upload them in any order I want to, Craig. <laughs> Just put one up the screen and then we'll, we'll whoever it is. Go on, then. Great. I'll go first. <laughs> so I have gone for as my defender. I'll go. I'll go. Def- I'll do my defender midfielder striker first. Makes sense. So uh, I've gone for Sufal. Um, I think you know. I thought he'd be five point five this year. I thought he'd be slightly more than that. He, you know, his assets. Uh, sorry, his assists. He got last year seven. Uh, clean sheets twelve. Created forty five chances. You know, he's got 128 points. I think he could do even better this year. I think West Ham will make one or two decent signings, uh, and especially uh, in the striker area. Uh, and I honestly can see him doing just as well. Uh, potentially more clean sheets. 
their opening games, uh, Newcastle, Leicester, Crystal Palace, Southampton and United. So although they've got Leicester and United in there, I think he could pick up some decent points against Newcastle, Crystal Palace and Southampton. Uh, Southampton's a difficult one. Uh, you don't know what Southampton's ever going to turn up, do you? That's the point with Southampton. Um, but yeah, I do think that Soufal is, is my pick for the defender. He's definitely going to be in my first team. Um, let's hope Newcastle. Like the Euros, didn't we? He was just so keen to get the ball in the box, like just as soon as possible. And... So attacking. Um, but the thing is, he does his defensive duty as well. That's that's the point, isn't it? He he does his defensive duty as well. So. You know, he's not a liability. He's not, you know, getting up high and then not tracking back. He's he's got a hell of an engine on him. So, uh, Soufa will be my my defender, my defensive pick. Midfield, I've gone for one of the most recent transferred guys. I've gone for Buendia, uh, who's gone from uh, Norwich to Aston Villa. Um, Six point five. A lot of people probably going to argue the case that for that price you could also get Rafinha. Uh, Rafinha from Leeds, get both, quite simply. <laughs> um, I think Buendia is a, a magnificent footballer. You know, last year, and albeit it was in the championship, he scored 15 goals, he had 16 assists. If you're doing that in FPL, you're scoring a lot of points. I know it's a different league, uh, but he is playing for a very decent Aston Villa side at the moment. He's, you know, I think they are looking really good. I think if Grealish goes, they'll reinvest that money into a few more players. You know, he's he's creating not 119 chances and 103 goal attempts. Um, with 103 goal attempts, you may be expecting him to score a few more. Uh, but he played nearly every game for Norwich as well. So for me. Uh, the only other factor is their f- first three opening games are Watford, Newcastle and Brentford. Targeting a lot of people who are playing Newcastle. Sorry. Um, but, uh, yeah, for me, it's a no-brainer to get Wendy in. Did he uh, play against the last year? Or no? Uh, no, no Pookie still, Pookie, Pookie still plays. Yeah. That's up in the air a bit. Like, who's going to take penalties? Because I can't imagine your guard is going to start very much. Time, no, there's, so. quite, there's quite a few people at Villa who probably can take them. You know, I wouldn't expect Watkins wouldn't be able to take them. Uh, you know they've got a um, uh, guy in the middle of the pack who takes them quite regularly I can't remember his name now well, but McGinn. yeah McGinn takes them I think um, well I don't think his playing time will be that much unfortunately for him um, but you know I, I believe he does uh, does take them so Buendia is a, is a good choice for me Last but not least, I've gone for Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who I owned a lot last year, and I did expect him to be slightly more this year. Um, again, I think he's an absolutely uh, great aerial uh, presence for, for Everton. I think you know their opening games, Southampton, Leeds, uh, Brighton, Burnley and Villa aren't that difficult for them. I'd like to see what the new manager brings. That's the only, only thing for me, is how they will play. But we know uh, Lucas Digne likes, likes to get forward and get balls into the box. Uh, and Dominic Calvert-Lewin is usually on the end of them. Um, at 8 million, I just thought it was a no-brainer, really, to, to have him. You know, when you look at what he can do uh, for a slightly less than sort of the, the premium guys of, like, Kane, for instance, I do think that he will actually improve on the 16 goals he scored last year. Um, you know, we do, we do know he has a lot of goal attempts. Hopefully he can convert a few more of those into goals this year. He still scored 165 points last year, which from an 8 million guy isn't terrible. Um, he'll play pretty much every game for Everton as well. Uh, I, I favour him over Rich Arlison, who's 0.5 cheaper. Uh, but he's still one to watch. Uh, but that, that's me, guys. That's my three players that I've chosen. Those three are in my team to start with. Now... Now, who do we want? Come on, do me. Oh, you know, since you are so nicely, you usually get dinner first. Speed it up. <laughs> right, I'm going to be brief. Oh, you're doing it, all right. Yeah, go on, do me. Yeah, who who? Who's first? Right, my defender, I'm guessing, is Trent Alexander-Arnold. Um, on the one hand, you think, yes, obvious pick, because he's the most expensive player in the defender in the game and that's probably because he is the best has the highest city in the game and um, I mean last season obviously he did pick up um, some injuries and obviously he's been injured during the Euros but for me it's a minor injury he's going to be back he's going to be firing 
he wants to get on the plane to go to the World Cup, so I think he will be um, producing some fantastic form again, back to his best. Um, Liverpool's opening fixtures are all apart from the Chelsea game in game week three. I think those first five fixtures are pretty decent for them, uh, and in particular, pretty decent for him. Um, I've actually considered now captaining him over Salah. Um, I was going to go for Salah, um, but I'm just wondering if maybe I go a little bit ballsy and just go for Trent, um, certainly in those first two fixtures. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an opportunity to take a little bit of a risk at the start. It could pay off. Um, so that's on my mind. That's what I'm thinking about. Um, and yeah, I just think that Trent will have a point to prove. Obviously, like um, Craig mentioned earlier, Kyle Walker has had a very good tournament. Reese James, I don't think he did that much wrong when he played. And he obviously had a good season when he was in the Champions League. Um, so he knows that he cannot um, produce what he did last season. He's going to have to up his game again. Um, so therefore, I think he will do, and that's my first pick. Uh, oh. My midfielder. Surprise, surprise. Um, oh, well. Surprise, surprise, yeah. It's Bakayo Saka. That's nice. Now, what a nice picture him for you. I could have put him crying last night in, but I decided. <laughs> you harsh bastard. <laughs> you could, yes, but no. Um, I am putting in Starboy Bakayo Saka. Um, as everyone knows, I'm a big Bukayo Saka fan. And You've never mentioned it! Purely, haven't I? You didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I think he will come back stronger after, obviously, what happened last night. And I do think that having fans in the stadium is going to help him um, to do that. Uh, I think the Arsenal fans have um, been really supportive of him, and a lot of fans from other teams as well. Um, but I do think that unlike when things like the Beckham incident happened in the past and he got booed everywhere he went and stuff like that, I think there will actually be a bit of appreciation for Saka from um, some of the rival fans and stuff like that. And that's me hoping that humanity, you know, people are going to be nice and be kind. So let's hope. Um, yes. And anyway, he's a great player. Like, he's a serious baller. So I think he will only get better. Um, obviously, he got five goals last season. Um, I think he can up that slightly. And I think he will definitely up his assists as well. Um, he's got 114 points last season, which isn't too bad, especially at his price point of 6.5 million. Um, so for me, um, I think he's definitely one to watch if you don't have him already. But I will be starting with him. My striker is newly promoted Ivan Tony. Um, I, like I said, played Gaffer last season and he was pretty much my set and forget captain for virtually the whole season. Um, there were a couple of occasions where obviously I, I, I moved off of him and I think he got injured or suspended at one point. Um, but generally speaking, this guy is a serious, serious baller. Um, last season scored 31 goals and 10 assists. I don't imagine that he will necessarily hit those kind of numbers, but I do think he'll be good for sort of 15 goals, maybe five or six assists. Um, for 6.5, again, you can't go wrong. And we've seen players come up from the championship and do well, like Bamford last season, Puki previously as well. Um, I do think Ivan Tony will be the next one in that line. Um, yeah, I mean, Watkins joined Aston Villa, having been Brentford's striker the season before, uh, and Ivan Tony has literally just filled his boots, and I think the same thing could happen. Ivan Tony could go and join an, an Aston Villa or somebody and produce the same kind of numbers that Watkins has done um, since he's joined the Premier League. And Brentford's um, initial fixtures aren't too bad. They're going to start with a defeat to Arsenal, unfortunately, for them. <laughs> um, but after that, they've got uh, Palace, and they've got an easy game against Craig's team, Aston Villa, Brighton, and then Wolves. So I think he could definitely get three returns, if not four returns in that, that run of five fixtures. Fine. Well done. Martin, you're up. Up. Okay. So sure, then, my... Uh first defender so 
this is this is essentially a kind of placeholder for a, for a Chelsea fullback. So um, you know, I'll gauge how it goes in pre-season, but sure is in at the moment. But you know, depending on what we see, um, if 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 it, if it looks like Reese James's first choice, then I think you know you could save 0. 0.5 there, um, and that would be an equally good pick if he's going to be first choice. Um, or as for the Quetta even um, but I definitely want one of those Chelsea guys um, you know, I fancy Chelsea to be high on clean sheets this season um, you know players like Asper Quetta Chilwell James they've also got some attacking threat in the system that they that they now play under Tuchel um, so I, I think the Chelsea fullbacks have got potential to push um, you know the Liverpool guys um, for points come the end of the season so I'll definitely be starting with one of them Um, and then in midfield, so Ferran Torres, so um, was in great form at the end of last season, um, scored five goals in Man City's last six games, uh, had a hat trick in there as well. Um, so, so he'll be in my team um, at least as long as Man City don't sign a striker. And yeah. um, if, if they do sign a striker, then 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 it may change. But as it stands, I think Torres looks like a great value pick at seven million. Um, as I say, he was he got himself into the team at the end of last season and. Um, I think I think Pep's a fan of him, and he, he was getting some minutes up front as well. But um, even when he didn't play up front, even when he was playing off the right, he was still he was still starting to score goals towards the end of last season. So um, so yeah, if he's in the team, he looks a value pick to me. Nice. I'm glad you mentioned Torres. <laughs> um, and then Cavani. So um, yes, yeah, similar, I suppose. If you look, if you look at the form at the end of last season, he was. You know, growing in in importance to Man United, I think at the back end of last season, and um, I, I expect him to hopefully be in the team from from the off this time around. Um, so he got four goals and one assist in Man United's last seven games last season. Um, so he was starting to look like a key member of the team. So, um, but even off the bench, his record was good. Um, he scored six goals and two assists off the bench um, last season as well. Um, and the and the other aspect of him is. You know, if someone like Calvert Lewin, Bamford Ings, if they're starting to look hot, then it's it's an easy sideways move. So I think just in terms of team structure as well, he's a nice price striker to having a team um, because say that there is manoeuvrability there if it doesn't quite work out as well. But he's going to be my my striker at that sort of price from from the off. I think he looks surprised that you've picked him in that picture. Not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, thank you Martin appreciate that over to you Craig yeah so unsurprising in my defender who just touched on him earlier Diego Lorenzo I think he's first choice centre back he's got the highest points per start expectation I would say for a 4.5 defender I want to get that price point right from the, from the off I think he's also quite helpful he's quite a helpful bench for like first start for the first couple of games I wouldn't be surprised if they if there was nil nil away to Man United, I don't think that's impossible first game of the year. I'm going to start him away to Man United, but it's a, it's a, it's a handy first sub, I think, for a, a couple of the first few weeks. We've got Liverpool in the first five as well. But so I, I think it's more that Leeds ended last season so well defensively, just when they seem like they've got more of their first choice defenders back, um, they were struggling a bit with, with some injuries and things up until then. So I think having him there, maybe with whoever he plays with, whether it's Cooper or Koch, whoever else it happens to be. I think that he'll be the sort of the standout in amongst that for Leeds, and so I've got reasonable expectations for Leeds. So he'll be it. Then yeah, midfield. I think Mares is the only midfielder at Man City that's not been at the Euros, if memory serves me right. I think a lot of the other ones have. So I think he's pretty much now to play the first couple of games where everyone sort of starts coming back and getting involved in training and sort of getting their fitness back and and whatnot. So I, th- I think that Mares is probably a lock for the first couple of games. I think it was pretty much a lot for the end of last year as well. I think last 13 uh, games of last year, he got five goals and five assists. I think he became sort of Man City's first choice right midfielder at the end. What we're going into this is his third year at Man City now, so I think he had enough time to sort of learn the Pep system and the Pep style of playing the expectations that he puts on his wide players. I think Mahrez was a bit slow to adapt to that at the start. Obviously, he had a different role at Leicester where he did so well. But... I think he's he's always got different expectations and what's expected of him at Man City. I think he he's kind of knows what his role is now, so I expect him to be first choice down the right. Um, so I definitely think he's a good choice for the first sort of four or five games, and to then we can reassess after that. No and then for for striker, I had to put one better player in there, didn't I? Um, <laughs> but I thought yeah, 
the, the, the thing that struck me about Watkins, so last year he had 87 goal attempts in the box last year. That was second only to Harry Kane. And he, he seemed to, from watching Villa every week, he always seemed to be in the post and in the crossbow. He was quite unlucky not to score quite a lot more goals, Watkins. We've obviously got Buendia now to go with Grealish and Traore and others. I think, if anything, he should get even more shots now with that extra creativity that we've probably got um, around. The, 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 the last point from his goal conversion was is only sort of 14.4%. We saw from Cavani's, he was up near 29 And a few others, so just use a few other goal converters. So Bamford was 15.9, Kane 16.8, Calvert-Lewin 19.3, Vardy 18.3, Wood 17.1. Even Che Adams, 16.4. So Watkins had a worse goal conversion than all of those. So he should have more chances. And if he just becomes in any way a more reliable finisher, he should have scored more goals as well. I think he's more than capable of scoring 20 in his ability. A few, let's say, a bit more clinical, a bit more creativity around him. He clearly have in the shots. I think 20 goals is possible, and that will be a phenomenal return for a 7.5. And as Martin touched on, I think he's the most competitive price point for strikers we've already got. Um, Raul Jimenez, uh, Callum Wilson, uh, Antonio, they're all in there. So if it, it feels like he's not working in his first three games, which are meant to be that OK on paper, then there's obviously an easy sideways move to one of those others. But I'm going to give Watkins a bash at those first three at least. Nice one. He's uh, he's also in my team as well. There you go. So uh, we can't both be wrong, Craig. That's the point, isn't it? Is there so, any of those must players that are in all four of our teams? I'm guessing not. I think Watkins is in my as well. Oh, it could be a fun house for Ollie Watkins. <laughs> and he's in my head. Yay! Ollie yeah. Watkins, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Perfect. So that's the FPL uh, focus done. So thank you very much, Craig, for the 4.5 Defender review. And thanks for you guys all for the three players each. Uh, been, that was really, really good. I appreciate that. Uh, so let's jump into our gaffer questions for the week. We've got one from Red Arrow here. Um, and it says, can he give us? Can we give him an overview of the initial championship fixtures players to target for game week one to five? Um, so we well, first of all, let me just shout out Stoke Gaffer and Joel, um, who have released the Gaffer tapes on YouTube. They've done a review um, of the opening um, fixtures and, and whatnot, and the game as a whole. Um, so if you're new to Gaffer and want to get your head around the game, definitely go and check those guys out. Um, they've only put the one video out at the moment, but they're going to be putting videos out every couple of weeks. Um, so that's Gaffer tapes on YouTube. Um, for me, I had a look at the fixtures, and actually Peterborough, because he mentioned the first five weeks, um, Peterborough have got a nice um, start. Now, I don't know if anyone else who has made um, drafts have uh, any Peterborough players in their team. Um, the most popular pick is the striker Clark, Clark, Harris. Clark Harris. Yeah, Clark Harris, um, who was in obviously final form last season. Um, and again, similar to the Ivan Tony reason, I guess. Um, I'm I've gone for him partly because of the budget, but also because I like the idea of picking a striker who's in form. Um, despite him moving up the league, um, I, you know, I like to kind of give those kind of players a chance. Um, so for me, I would shout out um, Peterborough assets, um, notably um, Clark Harris. Um, I don't know if Martin perhaps is another team. I have yeah. maybe a player I've got one as well. Aaron. Yeah, go, go, go Martin. Oh, I'll do the next one. Oh, I've got one. Cool. Uh, yeah, you stole my thunder on Peter a bit there. I was going to talk about them for one of the other questions we've got, but that's okay. We can come on to that as well in a minute. But I think, yeah, Cardiff have probably got. Oh, you bastard! I won't say anything then. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, of, of the teams of the teams that were sort of up towards the top of the table last season, um, they've, they've got a nice opening run. Um, so I think Keith Moore is going to be a hugely popular pick um, from game week one. Um, so they've got Barnsley, Blackpool, Peterborough, Millwall and Bristol City as their first five. Um, I mean, that's, that's a very kind run, so I expect Keith Moore is going to be in a lot of teams. <coughs> I think Fulham and Reading's opening games are also decent. Um, so from a Reading perspective, I think Yia Dong looks, um, looks good value this season. I think with Omar Richards going to um, Bayern Munich, um, there's going to be uh, some 
some uh, sort of responsibility on his shoulders to get forward from fullback now. Um, so I think you have gone at five million. Um, looks good, plan you at Reading. Um, and then from a Fulham perspective, um, I think Bobby D called over Reed um, or Mitrovic if he stays. Um, looking at them for for their opening run. Bobby Reed's in my team at the moment. Um, so, so yeah, Cardiff, Fulham, and Reading. I think have got a decent run. Uh, I agree agree with Peterborough as well. Uh, I also have Reed as well. <laughs> Again, it's those great minds. Um, the other, um, so, sorry, Dan. That's the other thing I was going to say on the uh, opening fixtures is if, if you're new to the game and you don't really follow the championship, if you look on the um, fixture difficulty rating on the Gaffer website, um, Derby don't have a red fixture until game week seven. But just a note to be careful about that because Derby are a hot mess at the moment. Um, <laughs> they don't really have a squad. They're not allowed to sign any players. They've probably got a points deduction coming. Um, they were terrible at the back end of last season and were very lucky not to go down. So, um, so although the fixture ticket might look good for Derby, um, my opinion is uh, avoid that. Fair point, fair point. And, and, and you can interrupt me all you want, Martin, especially if you're <laughs> going to give our viewers some great advice like avoid Derby. Um, perfect. So that concludes the gaffer questions for this week. So let's do uh, one from the chat man side very quickly, and it comes from Chris Hermitage. And it says... Outside of Hippia and Alexanderson, who would you target from Liverpool and Millwall? Right, I'll go first. Um, I would probably risk one of the wide players. I think I always did the live stream on Sunday for this week of Championship Manager. I think we worked out there that they've not really very much played left midfield apart from Smitsa. Now, he is £7 million for Liverpool, which is obviously not the the best price point because there's other more reliable assets at that price um, but he's one to risk as a big differential if not Danny Murphy should start on the right he's 6 million and probably will at least take some set pieces and maybe a penalty so I think one of those two would be my go-to uh, I don't really trust the striker especially with Owen coming back from injury so I think there's a risk that he may be back for the second game of the double um, defensively you've obviously seen Honcho not play in the first game so I think Kipia obviously is the best one to own there. So I think as a, as a second choice, I think I'd go for one of the white players and I wouldn't go anywhere near any Millwall players. <laughs> yeah, no, I can, I can completely understand that. What, a, not even Savarese? No, I think they'll, I think they're going to get thumped in both of them. I wouldn't be surprised they can see about eight goals in this double or maybe score one or something. So it, if you want a piece of that and think you can get that one goal score, then good luck to you. But nice. yeah, I think, I think Alexander's is a perfectly fine sort of first sub or I'll, I'll play him as your fourth midfielder from 4.5 but other than that I wouldn't be bringing players in I don't think from your all yeah, I mean the only thing I would say about that is that the, the fixture that they have on the other side of this uh, the final game week I think they're at home to Leicester so it's not you know if you do bring in a real asset for this week you can probably keep them for the following week so it's not the, the worst investment to make but yeah, I think I think there's the, the the possibility of getting deceived by a team having a double, and you're ignoring the fact that they're absolutely terrible. Um, <laughs> I don't own any normal, and I wouldn't be bringing any 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 of them in. And if I had to bring one in, um, it probably would be Alexanderson, like like has been mentioned. Um, I think there's there's too many other good strikers to, to choose from um, with this week and, and, and next. Um, isn't Savarese the same price as Dublin, for example? I mean, I think so, you yeah. just wouldn't. No brainer, in it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just wouldn't wouldn't bother. Perfect. But Liverpool, um, can I just say I've got a little bit stung in that I got in head of about four or five game weeks ago pre-planning for this double game week and he's um, the scout that he shows he's not playing so um, in the same position <laughs> very annoying yeah First yeah. Uh, yeah so I, I, I mean I'm I'm not sure with Liverpool um, yeah it's, it's it is what it is isn't it um, Heskey Heskey I did shout out Heskey in the past and I did buy him uh, again about five six game weeks ago with the idea that I was going to hold him until this double and in the end I ended up moving him on but um, I don't think he's a bad shot perfect 
And I believe that concludes the chat man questions. Yeah, thank you for those people that did send questions that we didn't get a chance to answer to. Um, we will answer them directly via the man account. We will talk about them um, in private and then we will send over an answer to those questions. So thank you to those people that sent questions in. Really appreciate that. Perfect. No problem at all. And that concludes today's podcast as well, guys. So thank you so much, as per usual, for, for turning up. And, uh, yeah, I feel that was a, a really a really great pod. Uh, thank you to Craig for putting your research into the 4.5 FPL defenders as well. Um, it uh, was really, really helpful. Maybe get a little vote out for if they want me to do one of these in an upcoming pod. It doesn't have to be this one. I'm, I'm happy to do some sort of more... Some smaller ones, or something, maybe just me or maybe two of us, or something. If there's other price points people want covered, then yeah, want... can I request a 6.5 midfielder slot, please? Done, just told you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that Saka is the best option, oh, so my... why do you need to good lord about oh, research? <laughs> oh, well. um, coming. Can I, can I also add that um, we are going to be tweeting out some of the images, so if you have listened on audio. Um, don't worry, we will get that information out there um, in form uh, of a thread. But also, we've got um, so our player picks. We can we can put out some of those images as well. Um, and if there's anything else that you guys want from us, please do just e- um, message us, um, and we will get back to you. Perfect. Shall I call full time on this, guys? Go for it. Perfect. Thanks. That's full time.